the last page of the Winter 2012 Exam 1. Question number 11, in state or out of state? So in 2010, it was stated that 64% of the University of Michigan students, uh, freshmen in particular, were from the state of Michigan, in state. For a research project, an undergrad student proposed that to assess if the current population of 2011 incoming freshman class has changed from this previous level. And she decides to do this test or assessment at a 10% level. So there's our alpha. So the rate before was 64%. We're going to look at the population for the current year to see if that rate has changed from the previous level. So the parameter of interest here is the parameter P. We talk about rates, proportions. Particularly whenever we define a value of P being a parameter, we want to say that this is a population proportion. And then make sure we say, well, what is it that you're counting? The population proportion of all incoming freshmen who have what characteristic in this case? That are from in-state. And the theory is, under H0, no change, that that population proportion should still be as it was the previous year, 64%. The freshman or undergraduate student here, Jesse, proposes to assess if it has changed from that level. Not if it's gone up specifically or down, but that it's changed. That it's not equal to 64% anymore. So there's our hypotheses of interest. She's still in her planning stages. She comes to you to ask whether if the actual proportion is not different, in other words, if H naught's true, what is the chance the test is going to conclude that it really has changed? What is the probability of concluding it has changed, that is rejecting the null hypothesis and going with the alternative when, in fact, it hasn't changed and H0 is true. What's the probability of rejecting H0 when H0 is true? What's the probability of what would be here a mistake called a type 1 error? We can talk about that probability at this point because we have not collected the data yet. And the probability of a type 1 error, also known as alpha here, would be, by her study design, 10%, because that's what she set her level alpha to. Setting alpha to 10% is effectively setting the type 1 error rate. Now she's going to take a look at her data. She's taken a sample of 150, and out of the 150, she finds 86 that are in state. And we're asked to basically conduct the test, at least get to that p-value stage. So we are again doing a one sample z-test. We have a large sample size of 150. We need to calculate this z-test statistic and then convert it to the corresponding probability value or p-value. So let's work out that z-statistic first. Our test statistic is p-hat minus the hypothesized value and the standard error on the bottom is actually the null standard deviation. And our sample proportion is going to be 86 out of the 150. 86 out of 150 turns out to be about 0 0.57, 5733. We're going to see how far away that is from the 64%, see if it's changed from it, and we'll work out the standard deviation that we should use on the bottom. So on top we have 57, 33, minus the 0.64, and on the bottom our standard error down there, standard deviation under H0, is about 0, 0.3.92. So our difference on top is negative. With the right standard deviation on the bottom we have a negative 1.70. Our sample proportion. 
86 out of 150, or about 57 percent, is more than one, almost two, standard deviations below that null value. Let's see how unusual that really is. Using the right frame of reference for z test statistic values, which is a standard normal distribution, and again our test statistic is this negative 1.7, we need to find how likely it is to get the value we did get, or something that's even more extreme. More extreme, though, is going to be in either direction, because it's a two-sided test. We happen to be below, but when we work out what the p-value is, we need to find the probability of getting what we got or more extreme based on the direction we were looking for, which is a two-sided version here. So I'm going to look up the area to the left of the negative 1.7 and double that to report my p-value. So for that we need to go to our table and let's go down to our table A1 and we're looking at negative 1.7 0. I'm seeing there a 0, 4, 4, 6. So we're going to take 0, 4, 4, 6 and double that. Doubling 0 0.0446 gives us a p-value of about 8%, almost 9%. And how does that compare to our level alpha? Our p-value is actually smaller than alpha. When the p-value is small, it says your results were kind of unusual under that h naught, so you're going to reject that h naught. That must be consistent with whatever p-value you reported. If the p-value is smaller, less than or equal to your alpha, you reject h naught. Now what does that mean in terms of a conclusion? Well then, we do have evidence, sufficient evidence to say that in our population, of incoming students for this current year that the rate that are in state differs from the previous rate. Our conclusions are about the population proportion. We're hypothesizing about P and P is the population proportion. Our conclusions should be in terms of that same parameter. Now if you rejected H naught, is it possible to make a type 2 error? What is a type 2 error again? That's when you decide to stay with H0, but HA, the alternative, is really true. If your decision is to reject H0, then you couldn't have made a type 2 error. The only mistake you could have made if you did make one would have been a type 1 error. Now this, of course, has to be consistent with what decision you had made based on your p-value. And later was found out, though, that she actually went to the U of M freshmen that are in her own residence hall of taking a true random sample from all U of M freshmen. If that were the case, because they were easier to be contacted, our study is subject to which type of bias? We had three main types of bias, response, non-response, and selection bias. And it's not whether they responded or didn't respond, it's the fact that she took her sample in this more convenient way, which happens to be a selection bias that would be introduced into the study.